Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. And while it is true that this video is a little bit more geared towards real estate videography, I think that if you apply this effect in many different filmmaking scenarios, you can really get a lot out of it. So stick around. You know, I really love telling stories with video. In fact, that's why I'm on this platform so much. But when I first started doing videos, I was primarily doing real estate videography. That's probably because I am a realtor. That's what I do for a living. But I found myself thinking, gosh, how can I make this interesting? Can you imagine how hard it is to make an inanimate object like a home look interesting in the realm of storytelling? It's not easy. So one day I thought, how cool would it be if I could be filming the outside of the house and then as a transition to get to the interior of the home, I could zoom through a window rather than just cut to the next scene being inside the house. Pretty cool, right? Way more interesting than just doing this as a transition. Or how about after showing several scenes of the backyard, zooming in through an iPad that's sitting on a desk to help you transition from the backyard back into the office. Come on, that's pretty cool. I even thought it would be pretty sweet if I could show myself kicking back on a couch, watching a beautiful backyard on my cell phone, and then zoom through the cell phone, show a bunch of clips of the backyard, and then zoom back into the house through that same cell phone. Now that's sweet. You know, there's a lot of great ways to use a zoom in or a zoom out effect in your productions by keyframing and scaling, incorporating motion blur and speed ramping. And quite frankly, I used to do those myself and I took a lot of pride in them, but they take a lot of time. So before we dive into this, let me remind you that I am a video editing hacker. I mean, I need shortcuts. There are times when I have literally 10 projects start to finish that are due in seven days and doing all of that as a one man band is kind of tough sometimes. So you can imagine how stoked I was when I discovered a plugin called TransZoom 2. It's not cheap, but it's really easy to download and install and the company is not sponsoring this video. I only have five subscribers, so trust me, it would not be worth their while, but because I'm a nice guy, I will put a link in the description. All right, let's dive in and take a look at this. In this example, I've decided to zoom into the fireplace in the family room and out of the fireplace in the living room as my transition between the two spaces. To pull this off as clean as possible, you really need to make sure that both fireplaces end up in the center of your composition. In other words, the ending frames of the family room's fireplace need to line up with the beginning frames of the living room's fireplace before the transition is applied. To ensure everything is lining up, select View, then scroll down to Show Horizon. This way you can easily see that both fireplaces line up in the center as you toggle back and forth. Add a little bit of sound design like crackling fire and a whooshing sound effect and I'd say that's a pretty unique way to transition between those two rooms. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. In this example, just like the iPad scene, I had already keyframed the pool scene into my iPhone and created a compound clip, also referred to as nesting for those of you who are using Premiere Pro. Then just like before, I made sure the iPhone ends up composed in the center before I add the zoom in transition. I reverse engineered the whole process using the same clip alignment principles before I added the zoom out transition. Again, add some sound effects like water falling and a whoosh, and I'd say this is a pretty slick way to transition out and then back into the house. You can use this technique so many different ways. You can zoom through a TV to expose an oasis style backyard, or even zoom from the garden flowers to a vase of flowers that's sitting on the kitchen counter. Now that would be cool. The point is you're only limited to your own creativity, but can I give you one little piece of advice when using this transition? Don't abuse it. Use this effect very sparingly because you can actually make your viewer a little bit nauseous. I think you get the idea. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. My hope is that you got a little bit of something out of this and maybe you can implement some of these things in your next real estate video or maybe you don't even do real estate videos and that's fantastic. You can use an effect like this in creative ways if you're vlogging or doing 
a number of other types of videos on this platform. Hey guys, please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, which would also be very helpful. More than anything, I think you should tap that bell to make sure you don't miss any future content. You don't want to, you really want to miss any of this stuff? Shame on me, thinking it was just a face.